That's okay. That is a, that's a, that's a really good read. But here's why we're here today, is we are inducting the 1963 team. And this is what we're going, and I apologize that our Hall of Fame is not ready. Uh, over the last year, we've renovated all of our sites, uh, wings and, and rooms, and they had to reconstruct our Hall of Fame. And they got it painted this week, hoping that they could have it ready for this picture to be hung so that y'all could see it. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. When it gets ready, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to send it to Jack. And Jack, I'm sure had, I'm sure you have their contact information by now. I do. I do. So we'll have Jack uh, send you a picture of, of what it's going to look like in the Hall of Fame. But, uh, again, this is, why, this is why we're here for the outstanding year that you guys had and, and ladies, the cheerleaders and the coaches with this team of 1963. Well, yeah. Boy, I tell you, uh, I think I've been most impressed with the with the game field that I saw yesterday. Uh, uh, Mr. Wiggins, and I'll go ahead and introduce him. He'll come up. Uh, uh, Chris Wigington is an ex-football coach. He's been a head coach, defensive coordinator. I'm not going to tell you where. You'll boo him. <laughs> <laughs> must be Permian. No. Well, actually, it's one of more of our of Sweetwater. Water. Hey, well, boo him. Let's go. Boo. Boo. I'll take it. What do they call your the stadium? The kind of a bowl? Mustang yeah, bowl. Something like that. I don't, I don't remember. Blood bowl. I don't remember. So, yeah. Let's keep it. Hey, let's keep it. We got some kids. <laughs> hey, let's keep it professional. Some kind of bowl. You're right. You're right. We call it maybe the toilet bowl. We do now. I just wanted to also show you something we're very, very proud of, too. We're also inducting today, and his family could not be here, is my, uh, Tim Tannehill, Cheryl Tannehill, uh, Tim's dad and mom are having a 50th wedding anniversary. And, but here, we're very, very proud of Ryan. I know y'all are here. Yeah. up with Ryan. Uh, we're very, very proud, and if you didn't know, but uh, you, you heard out a Tannehill name last night, and his brother, is a, is a quarterback for our, our current steers. But uh, we're very, very proud of Ryan. Of course, he excelled. I don't know, I'm not an Aggie fan, especially now that they defected to the, uh, to the Eastern Seaboard. And, and I'm just, I'm sorry, I just can't pull for him. I'm all Texas. I'm all big spring and all Texas teams. But uh, we're very, very proud of Ryan today. And, and uh, we'll certainly uh, uh, take a few pictures and send to his parents. At this time, I'd like to just, uh, uh, a friend of mine, and, and boy, I tell you, just full of historical knowledge about Big Spring High School, and, and he does a really, really good job, and I'm sure, I hope he can give you some information about how to keep up with uh, the Exus Association, but uh, just has a website that's really got a lot of good information. But uh, Mr. Baldwin, would you like to come and say a few words? Thank you. Mr. Lane Bond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. SHS, you know what that stands for, and alumni. We used to have a VSS Texas, but we in Dubai, uh, United Arab Emirates, one of our folks over there uh, was lost out because the VSH SEX ES <laughs> caused it to be knocked out. So we, we changed the VSHS alumni. You never know what you're going to get in. Uh, we, uh, just get on the high school or your BSISD and follow the bouncing ball, you'll find the, the ex students, and, and there's a website there. Right now, it's broken because Microsoft quit using the kind of stuff I'm learning how to use, and everything works except some of the interactive stuff. And we need money if y'all got any. Uh, <laughs> get it all fixed. Uh, we sent out 6,800 newsletters this time. We do about that much every time. 
cost about a dollar a piece to do it, and that's about how much money comes in every year. And in the last couple of years, we've had it in before we ordered the printing. But two or three years before that, we ordered the printing knowing that there'd be some come in at homecoming, and we'd pay the bill afterwards. So uh, that we're just about that close on that, just to let you know if you can uh, garner some support for us in that department. I want to thank you personally, well, yeah, personally, for the honor you've given to the school. I mean, this stuff to a great page. One more of these things, can we? If, uh, please, please follow the website and what all is going on. There'll be some stuff put on it from this, this weekend. I have some pictures for that. Does anybody have any questions on the subject? And if not, I'll quit. Thank you very much. Thank you.
stated that uh, we're not, you, you say. Well, I mean, you see, you guys probably remember part of the speech, but of course she said the main speaker had canceled at the last minute, and Coach Robbins said, what are we going to do? And she said, I'll call my daddy. And uh, Jack Cook shows up, and she had no clue. Y'all were kind of lunch, heard some story, but threw his hat across the floor. Y'all didn't hear this, threw his hat across the floor. So the crowd goes wild. Thank <laughs> you. 
There are a lot of them are for other people. One of the footballs was for me. Okay. I kept talking about how cool it would be, but I'm always messing around on some stuff. And anyway, the other day, a box came from Amazon, and Linda said, this is for you. And she always gets disappointed because I guess everything. And I said, I bet this is one of those autographed footballs. And anyway, she had gotten two of them. So one of those is mine. I gotta tell you, man, and you guys have said it, and I'll echo it, and I've told him uh, a bunch of times, but I was telling Linda last night, we're big fans, it just so happens, we watch CBS News a lot, and we love that they resurrected on the road, uh, like Charles Peralt used to do, and a guy named Steve Hartman does it now, and I told Linda, I don't know if I'll do any good, but I said, somebody needs to tell Steve Hartman about Mike Ritchie. I said, yeah. if I were still in the news business, I'd be doing a story about my I never thought I'd see a, a, a principal leading a pep rally. Never thought I'd see a principal driving, a, you know, in a district this big, driving a school bus and all this stuff. You're, you're just amazing. I asked him how he did it, and he said, I don't have much of a home life. <laughs> there you go. There's a lot of things I thought about this weekend. One was uh, listening to you guys, and I just was a minute ago, I hadn't thought this out. I was just writing down notes a minute ago. I thought there was a real common theme, I mentioned it to a couple of you, that I heard in your stories to me, and especially in the stories you were telling to the team, the current team, yesterday morning. And it was a common theme that I have said about stuff in my life, and I, it's what I heard. It's the underlying theme I heard in everything. But what I tell people sometimes when I will speak to a group or do something is most of the good things that happened in my life happened because of discipline. Uh, so many good things that happened to me happened because of discipline. And many of the worst things that ever happened in my life happened because of a lack of discipline. And I heard that in what you guys were saying yesterday. That's really what you got a, a real shot of from uh, Don Robbins and his staff and even your teammates was discipline. And it made all the difference and I think it's why even you guys were responsive when we started contacting you about uh, getting you to this event. So I commend you for that discipline and for the honorary discipline I've received this morning. <laughs> uh, I also, there's certain little pictures that flash through my head when I think about that with regard to discipline. I was thinking just a while ago, huh, Don Robbins and all of the discipline you guys had I wonder what would have happened if somebody had done a end zone dance. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't have been good. <laughs> You'd still be running. <laughs> we we can only imagine. Or you know, took your head here all. It, it probably like yeah. the Vince Lombardi yeah. thing where he said, next time you get there, act like you've been there before. But, uh, but anyway, all, all I can say is that. Uh, you know, these last months, I've just, in my head, been dreaming of what this was going to be like to get you guys together. And, you know, there's not many things you do in your life where things exceed your dreams. I, I think, of, have you ever had deals, you know, like every time you get together with, uh, get a family together for a reunion, where you fantasize how good it's going to be, well, you know how it is. You have families together, it's never quite like you envisioned it. You go, well, that wasn't quite as good as I thought it was going to be. But this is better than I thought it would be. Yeah. And all <laughs> my vision of this was to be able to see you guys really enjoy this. Uh, the way the other day I was telling Baxter was all these years I have 
to people, it doesn't matter where I've been, many times have told the story of the San Angelo gang to people, especially, <laughs> thousands of times, especially, especially when somebody says it's impossible in some sporting event, it's impossible for somebody to beat somebody else. I always say, let me tell you about a time when a lot of people thought <laughs> that it was impossible. And I had forgotten the story. I loved yesterday when Poss was telling the story and a couple other people about how San Angelo ran 88 guys through you guys. Y'all's 28 guys that night, was it? Or however many you had on the team? 33. 33 through the middle of you is kind of an intimidation thing. So I've told the story many times, and I will certainly tell it many times more. But you proved your cohesiveness by... Uh, getting together uh, with all this and to answer one of your questions yeah uh, Josh Brown who shot a lot of our pictures give him a hand Thanks, yeah. and, uh, and other people like Matthew Bell who brought his really good camera for this event who shot pictures are all going to get these photos to me and my project the next few weeks is to get these things organized for the for you and I'll figure out a format to get them to you in so that you can then take them to Walgreens or whatever but then I have whatever size you make but I want to get them all together both the stills and the video because he shot stills and video and edit you at, uh, basically together a movie of this uh, weekend so it'll take a little time to get it together but I'll get all that put together but anyhow this has so exceeded what my dream was, uh, and I don't know what I'm going to do with my life now, but I'll tell you. <laughs> and uh, it's sort of like this became a part of my bucket list the last six months, so I can check that baby out. <laughs> I'm sure they're actually is some catching up to do. She said, when you, I said, let me get past this weekend. The last couple of three weeks, we need to do it. I said, just let it sit. I'll get to it in two or three weeks. I, uh, you know, it's, uh, some of y'all remember from an email I sent out, the Trace Adkins song. Uh, some of you know it if you're country western fans, but the, the uh, deal he says, you know, it's how he's going through and he talks about his daughter. And, you know, she's young and she's saying, well, as soon as we can get out of here, we're going to move here. As soon as we, you know, we spend so much of our lives saying, well, as soon as I can get this over with, I'll do this. Or, you know, when you're in high school or maybe when you were out running laps, you know, as soon as I can get through. And then, you know, when you get older, a lot of stuff you didn't value like you, you know, nobody does at the time. Nobody values things the way they should at the time. And you reach a point where you're like, oh, man. What a gift for one more day with my mom, or what a gift for one more day with my dad, or what a gift for one more, and you know, the song is, you're gonna miss this, and you're gonna want this back. Things that even we complain about at the moment, we're gonna miss it, and someday we're gonna say, man, if I could do that for one more day. Well, you guys, my dream was for you, you know, there's no time machine, but I, my dream was for you, was to get this back for uh, a little bit. Big Spring means so much to me. I didn't realize how much, when I got away, you know, and got busy and got in a career, you think you're too busy to think about stuff in the past or to deal with a lot of stuff. I treasure so much stuff here. I love coming back here. Uh, there's just something about even driving by places and remembering people and remembering things. So I wanted you this weekend to have a chance to travel back in time. Uh, you'll get more stuff in the future. And there's just one thing you can do to wrap up this weekend for me that'll make it perfect. And that's if everybody stands and sings the school song.
everybody's dead, we have a funeral. And I want to tell y'all, y'all mean more to me because you've been a part of my life story, just like I've been a part of y'all. And I thank God every day for you. So be careful, and let's stay in touch with each other. Amen.